Welcome back. Today, we are concluding element 23, which is master your thoughts and emotions. All right. I just want to let you know, this is going to be a long one. So it's probably going to be about 10 minutes. And I apologize in advance. You might need to put this up in segments, but I wanted to make sure that we get it all done today to conclude the week. And as I mentioned, this is one of the most important elements. I am continuing to reread it myself, as well as share it with clients um, over and over again. So we're going to be doing pages 470 to 479, which is about the level of consciousness. All right. So diving right in. The first step is to start becoming aware of the different emotions that you are feeling and simply sense whether they are directly supportive of your values, meaning that they're positive, or if they're difficult and unsupportive, negative. All right. The goal is to become more curious about your emotions and your feelings to help you become more conscious as well as being able to build this familiarity with how you are operating in the world, okay? Most of us are not aware of the multitude of emotions that we experience throughout the day. So it's important, this first step is to be able to identify them, all right? So Dr. A, he actually asked us to track our emotions, uh, you know, the way we're feeling over the next couple of weeks. And he recognizes that it may sound goofy, but, Let's do this, okay? So you're going to want to note any emotional stresses that you feel during the day, right? All the emotional states. Identify whether you detected these emotions as a result of your feelings. Consider how many of them directly support what is important to you. Question how many are difficult or tough and are not serving you directly in a helpful way. You may notice that many of them are difficult. This is because that it's our natural default and design to pick out the perceived or real threats. Many feelings also come from a scarcity mindset, the feeling that there is not enough. We are designed to move away from conflict or threat and rather than to move towards the opportunity. So this first exercise is to improve your awareness or the intelligence of your emotions. This means that we can develop the skills to distinguish between them and learn how to label them. That's first. Next, um, knowing where we feel the emotions, that can help us develop maturity when dealing with that emotion. So certain emotions show up in certain regions of the body and they express themselves as sensations or these feelings, right? Anger has a tendency to show up in the in the jaw and the neck, the shoulders and the back. Fear has a tendency to uh, hit us in the gut. And sadness that actually hits us around the eyes or the throat or, you know, over here in the heart area of the chest. And in this way, just the location or of the sensation or the feeling in the body, that can act as an indicator of what emotion may be involved, which will lead you to rapid awareness. Because as I mentioned, many of us aren't sure how to identify that. So tune in with your body. I'm going to read this exercise, which is on page 472 and 473 of your life book. So Dr. A.S. says, sit in a chair, comfortable chair or couch, and simply bring your attention to your breathing. And once you've taken a few deep centering breaths, scan your body for any feelings or emotions that may be present. And if you can't detect any, create one through a recent memory or an event. Once it appears, identify it, and then write it down in as much detail as possible. And this is gonna help you start seeing these trends and patterns. So describe it in as much detail as you can. You want to get really detailed in your understanding of the location and intensity, as if it has sound, color, or temperature. Where is it moving in your body? How does it leave your body? How long does it last? So he gives us this checklist of the eight emotions. Okay. What am I feeling? Anger, joy, acceptance, surprise fear, sadness, anticipation, disgust. And then he says, are you sure? What other two, top, other two options could it be? 
So if you think that it's anger, could it really be fear or sadness? Where is it in your body? How does it leave your body? How long does it last? And is there anything special about it? And I know, as Dr. Ray mentioned, this may sound goofy, but as you start to tune in and pay attention, you're going to find it really interesting. And that the goal is that you'll be able to identify it much quicker. On average, an emotion lasts 90 seconds if you don't interfere with it. And they also come in waves. They rise, they crest, they abate. And by releasing the feelings that come with them, you will fear, feel this period of calmness as they leave your body. And because you're aware and in control, it's going to give you some great information if you allow it to. And if you practice this daily, you will know what specific emotions mean, like a detective. It's gonna give you some insight whether the emotion is appropriate or not. You'll be able to start managing it in a way that builds health and well-being. So the following questions will allow you to become more keen, a keen observer. And um, as you take, um, as you take out becoming immersed and being stuck in this loop, all right? So Dr. Ray asked, what am I feeling, right? I am feeling what? Why am I feeling this? What is this emotion telling me? What's at stake? How is this affecting what's important to me, right? Could be anger and it could be unconscious due to a previously conditioned response. And it's probably coming out as a need to blame someone or something, right? Or the need to be right. But this is your old story. Now, with a curious perspective, try to figure out what this emotion is telling you and what value it holds. It may show up as I'm upset and I'm going to tell them what I really think of them. Okay? Pick a situation, a recurring emotion or an area that you currently are stuck in your life and work through it using these questions. Do it from a place of curiosity, of compassion and courage, as well as one of self-acceptance and self-love. Okay, what are you feeling? What's going on here? What do you need to do? What aligns with your values? What serves you? And what serves the outcome here? Our values are what guide our decision-making and determine what secondary choices that we make in difficult situations. We will choose to act in a manner that supports our values. They determine what secondary choices and actions we make. You know, life is not about being happy all the time. When people only want happiness, it actually can slow down their development because the quest for happiness can suppress emotions and other aspects of our experiences. When someone dies, it's important to be sad and to grieve. And when you're in danger, it's paramount that you sense fear. The true meaning of being alive is not just to feel happiness. It's really to sense and to feel the full range of human emotions. I mean, think about it. If you like scary movies or roller coasters, right? What we want to do is eliminate the negative destructive ones like disgust, shame, guilt, rage, and so on. Sadness is a pure emotion. Depression is not. And while sadness can be almost nourishing, depression is filled with anxiety, self-guilt, and doubt. It's maladaptive, and so by studying our feelings, we can stop repressing our emotion, emotions that end up hurting us, all right? And this is all from Dr. A's Habits of Health, right? Element 23. Dr. A ends this element with a, a quick routine that we can add to our day to really improve our efficacy of learning these. He suggests that after the alarm goes off, Add 30 seconds of appreciation for the fact that you are alive and that it's a beautiful day and that you have control over your life. Waking up and focusing on our values and what brings meaning to our lives, that can change and set the right tone for the day. And then he suggests add 15 seconds 
of feeling connected and thinking about what you're going to do today. And that can dramatically increase our satisfaction. Emotional mastery can significantly improve our health, our relationships, and our well being. It improves our ability to learn and to focus. It elevates the quality of our decisions. It improves our working conditions. And it can bring resilience when adjusting to change. Our motivation and quality of life will all improve. Dr. A, he asks us to invest in this critical area of emotional development and our journey to better health and well being will get easier. And you will have great personal satisfaction as you develop more control over your world. That's a big element, right? <laughs> so thank you for joining me as we conclude another element of our life book. I mean, can you believe we are done element 23? I am so looking forward to seeing you next time as we begin element 24, which is your journey to higher consciousness. I know that this was a really deep element this one, you're going to want to go through over and over again to really be aware and conscious of your feelings and your emotions. So please feel um, free to like, comment, share the post, hop on over to the YouTube channel called Healthy and Vibrant. And I so look forward to seeing you next time.